there's there's obviously certain things that plague the N54 as well as the N55. And the most infamous, the oil filter housing gasket. And the most important thing to note about the oil filter housing gasket is the fact that if that starts leaking and gets on the serpentine belt and you have the serpentine belt basically getting chewed up and ruining your entire motor. Okay, so a couple of failure points that we want to point out that you guys should be aware of. N54, N55 cars uh, will have a vent hose that goes from the reservoir to the radiator hose, and it's actually one piece. And when you're doing the oil filter housing gasket or the, the pulleys and the belt itself, the serpentine belt itself, you'll need to take out the fan. And when you're taking out the fan, this actually sits like this on a clip. And there's not a lot of wiggle room to actually move it up. So what really happens is, even if, you, if the slightest catch, and this is probably original, you know, from 10 years old and 160,000 miles on it, it will snap off like this, okay? And then here's another coolant pipe, guys. When you're doing the oil filter housing gasket, you're actually looking at this orifice here, okay? This is what the hose looks like, okay guys? It's a little slinkied up kind of hose. This mates into your engine block by two 10 millimeter bolts. And the thing about this is, if you look at it, it's plastic, right? Typical BMW, nonsense of making plastic parts and it's not the best design um, it's, a, it's it's definitely a wear and tear item when you're taking this off mine was actually cracked all along the inside and if if daniel can kind of if you see that that's what it looks like and i really didn't know what to expect when when this happened and i didn't know where this hose went but it actually goes to your thermostat and the good news is rain the oe supplier of these hoses which this is and then rain itself rain the company makes an aftermarket aluminum piece okay and we'll put we'll put the the part number and link down below to order this from fcp euro that's where i ordered it from and all you really have to do is carefully remove this uh uh this clamp here which has no worms or anything just be very gentle and cut this off and then you're going to slide this in and use this versus this, okay? If you saw what this kind of turned out to be because of the heat, coolant going in and out, not a good thing to, to keep that in there. It's probably going to suck that plastic in, get stuck somewhere. Luckily, mine is actually in the housing itself, so I'm going to pull all that plastic out. Um, you can see this lip right there. Okay, on the inside of it. I'm gonna take a pick tool and just pull that out. And sure enough, you can, you can actually put the replacement back in and probably do this job every, I don't know, 40, 50,000 miles. Um, but plastic, like anything else, you know, the heat cycle and if you're parking it outside, cold weather, hot weather, this is gonna shrink and expand and that's what's gonna cause this to crack and deteriorate over time and you don't want that to happen, okay? I'm glad I caught it. I'm glad I'm replacing this. Really cheap. Rain is an OE supplier, and this hose itself is about 20 bucks. This itself is 18 bucks. Well worth the investment so that you don't have that issue in the future. Hey guys, Daniel here. A couple of other failure points I want to mention before you dive in. You're going to need to clamp this radiator hose before you remove the oil filter housing, basically to minimize the coolant spilling. Be very gentle with this, or else. But first, we're gonna. I'm gonna. Oh. It's not good. But at least we know which one's the coolant. <laughs> Fuck. Next major major failure point: when you remove this oil filter housing bolt, make sure you're rotating the wrench upward. We did the opposite and torqued it even further and ended up stripping the bolt. Holy 
shit, dude. Holy shit. Oh, it's fucking up. Fuck. Fuck. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ah, oh, man, what a nightmare. Yeah, that wasn't fun. As Aiden said, it was a nightmare, but we managed to get past it by cutting it off, as you'll see later in the video. With that said, let's get started on this, guys. Well, there it is. Valve cover done, spark plugs done, as well as the, the coils. That's a huge maintenance item. Since we addressed the number one gremlin of oil leaks, um, it might have been the oil cap on my car, to be honest. Um, it was a, a older kind of oil cap with the Castro sign on there. Um, but let's go on with this guy. A lot of the other N55 cars will have uh, a Torx bolt up here. Um, but for some reason, the 135 is under here. Um, before we get in there, there's definitely going to be oil gushing out. Um, even though we're going to replace these belts, I'm going to cover as much as I can um, because it's going to gush out. And if you have one of these tools, it's definitely going to come in handy. Okay, 13 is out. Oh, there goes the oil. And we just want to kind of slinky this out. Um, we're going to leave it for a couple of minutes. Don't twist too much, but I just wanted to get the residual oil out of here. And I am going to block it off with a little bit of paper towel. Not so much the oil coming out, but I don't want anything going in. And I put it on the gentle setting. Okay, don't forget the washer. This is that one long bolt and the rest of them are gonna be nuts. Okay. Don't drop the last one. It's way back there. All right, guys, uh, we're going to take the sandwich plate off um, the oil cooler plate. Okay.
there we go. Yeah, we found the we found the oil leak culprit. It was this gasket. Oh man. That is not friendly, guys. That is not friendly. Because now we can see where all the oil has accumulated. Um, and as well as the oil cap and the valve cover. Um, we're gonna do a nice little cleanup job here before we go any further. We don't wanna jam dirty stuff in there, but we are gonna be taking the oil filter housing gasket off. Hence, I'm gonna do my best to plug up the galleys over here. And all I wanna do is just clean the bottom side of this. Um, we will clean it more, but I don't want all that dirty stuff going into the cylinder head. Okay. Okay. And I'm just going to spray away. This is probably overkill, but uh, you know what? Better safe than sorry. Right? Make sure you're using non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Okay. Now what I'm what I'm doing is getting the gunk off. Because ultimately, when I do take off the valve uh, the, the oil filter housing gasket. I don't want all that dirt to be trapped and go right into the oil. Okay? Okay. This part we're gonna take off and we're gonna make sure that's taken care of. But look at all that. I mean, that is some nasty stuff. Nasty, nasty stuff. But first we're gonna, I'm gonna, oh. Not good, but at least we know which one's the coolant. <laughs> okay, and that's as far as it comes out. Okay, that should minimize how much cooling comes out of here. Okay. Yep, that, those belts are totally contaminated. Um, but at least we're changing the belts. Um, and let's remove the oil filter housing gas, uh, oil filter housing. Remember guys, medium, right? Not the shortest, medium. Because the shortest is gonna be down here, longest is gonna be up here. Okay, longest bolt. Okay guys, top one is the longest bolt. Oh, it's fine. 
Up. Fuck. Fuck. All right, guys, if you're in the same boat as us, make sure to cover up the surrounding area well with something like microfiber towel. Also, don't forget to wear eye protection as well. What you need to do here is slice off the head of the bolt, but make sure, make sure to cut into the bottom of the circular plate right beneath the head. This will take multiple attempts and a lot of patience. So don't rush and risk any injuries. This is what you want. See how the round plate has been completely cut and removed, and all you're left with is the shank. Get it to this state and you can remove the oil filter housing. Okay. So, if you see here, here's the old flattened out oil filter housing gasket, and you can certainly see that's not, maybe it was still sealing some of it, but you can see that it's definitely due for a change. Um, if you look at it that way, this should be protruding out and it doesn't take a lot of torque to keep this on there, but certainly it's probably seen better times guys. So it's a great time to kind of do this. Um, we're gonna clean the hell out of this thing and try to get this as, as clean as possible before we pick that out. I'm gonna stick some stuff in there and just really clean it out. So. We got a lot of the orifices kind of blocked off with some paper towels and shop towels. Um, I really want to just clean it up a little bit um, and then we'll start to take off the, the stuff, uh, st the, the gaskets here. I'm going to avoid the, the contact with this. I'm just going to put my thumb over it. I'm going to take a little brush here, just agitate some of this stuff while it's out. So here it is guys, uh, cleaned up pretty well. Um, you're going to have a lot of this residual stuff and make sure just to kind of inspect it and it's clean as possible. Look how flat where this mates through but it, it's still kind of raised um, but it's it, it you can feel that it's uneven in some areas and obviously this has seen better days um, it probably was doing a job of really you know protecting against leaks but it's a great time to do it i'm going to take a pick tool Wow, it is stuck on there guys. I mean, all that heat cycle and you can see where it was inside of the housing. It still has its grooves. That's a good sign, right? But it's, uh, it's definitely fantastic that, you know, we're taking this time to... It's really a good time to change this out, guys. It's oil leaks are never fun and if you own a BMW you know what we're talking about um, there's always gonna be oil leaks if it's if there isn't an oil leak it's not a BMW okay and then we're gonna take the one off of this and if you see I'm going towards the grooves right I'm not like digging into the housing itself because I don't want to damage it even though the gaskets gonna do the job of sealing it Okay. Yeah, it's a good time. Definitely a good time to change it. So we have the oil filter housing kit that comes with everything that you can possibly need. Um, obviously the gasket for the oil filter housing, the gasket for the cooler, this piece, right? And 
all the bolts, all brand new bolts, and don't skimp out and not get the kit itself. It includes everything pretty much that you need. Also the O-rings, right, um, that go right in here. Um, we're gonna put brand new O-rings in there, which is gonna be, you know, you wanna rest assured that you're changing all the, all the possible leak points that you can while you're doing this. If, you're, if you spent the number, you know, the, the hours or whatever to, to do this job, you know, you might as well do it right. So get the kit, and there's only one way that this goes on, which is like so. And I gotta tell you, That feels so much better than the old stuff. And what I'm trying to avoid is having any of this dirt, oil, whatever, mate with the oil filter housing gasket. That's why I'm trying to be a little bit diligent about cleaning this out and if you start leaking again after you put some miles on the car you'll know that you'll remember that you cleaned this and oil is leaking from somewhere and we clean this area, the mating surface, really, really diligently. So we wanna, we wanna start off with just kind of working some of these bolts. So I'm gonna stick, I know you guys are probably like, I'm probably spending more paper towels and shop towels and stuff, but I don't want stuff falling in there. gonna keep it right there and you can tell which one's the shortest and which one's the longest right obviously the travel of this bolt is really long so that is the longest this is the shortest right look at that and this is a pain in the ass um, this is a real pain to put this guy in because it's everything else is threaded into the block right the other two bolts this one is threaded into the housing so it's a bit of a pain, but just kind of hand tighten everything. And then we're gonna torque these down. Okay. And we'll get a little extension going. And this is the whole reason, this bolt very specifically is the reason why we needed to get the intake manifold off. So the E10 bolts, um, these are 22 Newton meters. That's about 16 uh, foot pounds and change. So I set it on the 22 Newton meters. There you go. Pretty self-explanatory where this goes. Um, kind of start off at the back end because that's where the mo most orifices are. And you can see the shape of the filter housing gasket itself. Um, this is where the cooler plate goes onto. And these are all equal size. There's no different lengths. Um, so you don't really need to guess which one's which. You want to make sure you know which one's going on which. And you see this dowel, like the, the, the little protruding nub. Um, just kind of start off with that guy first. Okay. Okay, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the top two so that it kind of holds in place. And there's one at the bottom. OK, 
Okay, this is uh, 13, this is 18 newton meters, so it's about 13 pounds and change. Again, go around and even. All right guys, that's basically it. Here are a few things to keep in mind when putting everything back together. Reinstall the oil filter and make sure you drain the oil and fill it back up with a fresh one. After all those leaks, the car will be oil starved if you don't replenish it. Reconnect the radiator hose and if you removed it, the coolant hose as well. Then reinstall the intake manifold, air intake, intake ducts, the cowl, and the engine cover. If you made it this far and got everything done in one piece, hey, congrats on the job well done. We're glad you found it helpful. As always, please consider subscribing to show us your support. It really keeps us motivated whenever we see the number of our audience grow. Thanks guys, we'll catch you on the next one.